I want to know how did you prove the, existi uh, the existence of chakras? Or how do you know that they like, really exist as energy flows? Thank you very much for your question. It's a very good question because uh, the theory of chakras are coming to Europe around uh, 1918. There, there were a very nice book in Europe, one of them from Leadbeater. The second one is uh, from another English uh, writer who translated the Shat Chakra Nirupana, which was a book about chakras. The name of Shat Chakra means uh, in the yoga they accept only six main chakras instead of seven. And uh, first, in yoga, there are, everyone has three bodies, and in the three bodies, five layers. And in this body, there are 72,000 nadis. That means psychoenergetic channels. And these psychoenergetic channels are, there are connecting points. And these connecting points named chakras. These chakras you can experience by, by yourself. And you can transform your chakras. And those teachers who has uh, a little bit uh, more expanded consciousness than the average human, they can see with their own eyes. I mean with their own experience and uh, the, the stories from there. Also in the 50s, 70s, 80s, last century, in uh, Los Angeles uh, University, UCLA, they made many tests and uh, they could uh, measure the energy from chakras. And also there is a very famous book from Hiroshi Motoyama, who also, it's a Japan writer, who also uh, wrote a book about this uh, theme, which uh, seems to many readers as an acceptable theory for chakras. What I can suggest you to try in your own body to locate this chakra and try to repeat the mantras which connecting to these chakras and you will feel for your own self how this chakra is operating and also for example, if you are a very stressed state of mind and you lay on your back and uh, start the mantras from chakra to chakra, you feel that the chakra is starting operating in a normal way and the blockages in the nadi systems from the 72,000 nadis you, you feel a very good feeling, you feel your body very relaxed, very simple, because the mental and physical stress gone away. Is it enough for you? How was it able to figure out which mantras, which word you have to say, which uh, words you have to say exactly, like to open up chakras? It is written, it is written in books, but the main teachers are always telling to students these are so-called bija mantras. Bija mantras means very strong effect on your body. And if your nadis is not clean, you can hurt yourself because there are very big energetic wave coming into work in your body. That's why it can cause harm for those who 
not pure enough to use these mantras. What is the advice for those who who don't feel that he or she is pure? He can repeat in every chakra the mantra Om. I tell you very quickly which are these mantras. For the first chakra is The second chakra, Vam, Vam. The third chakra is Ram, Ram, Ram. The fourth chakra, Yam, Yam, Yam. The fifth chakra, Sixth chakra, anyway, if you don't feel that you are purified, use the Om Mantra and it's a very good effect on your body and you will feel your own chakras. I'd ask, uh, they like to ask you if you think it's possible to apply your lifestyle with meditation or yoga to another type of suffering, in particular the one of people who live in the hospital or have uh, mortal disease, in order to let them see their life from another point of view and fight their problems with a stronger mind. Thank you. It's a very good question and uh, unfortunately not too many people know that uh, Yoga is not for the sick persons, but they can use it. Here is a very good yoga therapist, Anandi, who is a medical doctor, and uh, in the same time, she is an Ayurvedic advisor and a yoga therapist. This is quite a new area of how to help to those persons. Uh, if you know the definition of yoga, the definition is yoga is uh, yoga shchitta vritti nirodaha in Sanskrit language. That means yoga means complete stop all thinking. If you have no thoughts at all, you reach the peak of yoga. That means yoga is, as Chongan Sunim told, yoga is not physical exercise only. It's the first floor, or maybe a little bit lower. The answer for you is you can help a lot for those persons who can a little bit control his thoughts. And you can also help him or her in the hospital, for example singing for her, maybe ask your relatives or anybody to make light breathing exercises if it is allowed by the yoga therapist. Anyway, in the yoga there is quite definitive steps for your death. That means if you are feeling that you are very close to die, that you have to focus your mind here and to repeat the mantra OM. And if you can keep this point here and keep your mind on this mantra, then you can have a choice to lead out the life force at the top of your head. And if you can do that, that means you are out of samsara. You are out of samsara. But try to imagine um, if you are a near-death experience, it is not an easy to, le to live a life. For example, you are for 50 years working very hard to get lots of money, creating lots of sins for yourself. And 
uh, it is not an easy to imagine that when you are close, when you are very close to the death experience, you can control your mind, because everyone's last thought is deciding your next birth. And what is your last thought? Your last thought is which was the most important thought in your whole life. Mm -hmm. So it is not an easy, but the final answer, you can do a lot of help for those who are in need in a hospital or in the final stage, but maybe the best thing if you ask a yoga therapist who is, for example, a medical doctor as well, because there are some yoga practice which are not suitable for this person who is in the final stage. Is it okay? So I have a question to Omkara. The question is about uh, trust, the feeling of trust, and if you can... Maybe feeling of trust? Trust, yeah. Uh, yeah? Versus feeling of uh, doubt. Yeah. And if you can maybe tell me something about a physical sensation that can help gain more trust or to deal with feeling too much doubt. First of all, you have to find something in which you believe. And uh, if you find, for example, I can, I can say only I was a Christian, let's say that, until I got 12 years old and I flew away. I have many reasons, maybe I was too young for that <laughs> Christianity. And uh, I, I became a materialist for many, many years, but I always knew that there is a absolute consciousness. Chongan Sunim told here that if you want to evolve to get more trust, first you need a teacher in whom you believe. Second, there is a method by which you can increase your trust. You can increase the trust only if you feel that uh, this person, this teacher is worse for your trust. And if you increase by techniques to increase your trust, and there are many people around you who do the same way, then you will gain very strong will, very strong belief. And the belief is only about one thing, about yourself, nobody else. Don't believe anybody else instead of you. Because there is no God outside, outside of you. There is only one God which is inside you. If you see a God outside, you have to know that you are cheated. Don't believe that. And I think maybe the time is not enough you have to sit with your teacher in whom you have belief and you will give those items you have to practice but to practice with a teacher in a sangha and you have to become a student this is the worst thing everybody want to be a teacher nobody want to be a student that's horrible but in yoga, everybody needs to be a student 12 years to become a teacher. Hello. Um, since I started practice uh, meditation, I left a lot of uh, ideas and visions about me as a religion and more. <coughs> and uh, I have a, a specific duality in my mind that I can't stop, I can't leave it. Like it's, I feel it controls me some subconsciously. What is that duality? Uh, it's something uh, personal. 
So is my answer. Attain this point. This kills all dualities, all right? But if you are not clear about that yourself, if you're hiding it from yourself, it's not going to work. We call that backseat driver. You drive a car from the backseat, backseat driver whispers into your ears. You don't see the face, you don't know what it wants, but it always whispers into your ears. That's unseen, unrecognized, half-suppressed duality. Very dangerous. So you have a choice. Either you go back before thinking and let it rot away beneath the layer of your subconscious. You can do that. Or you can actually bring it up to the surface and you ask, what is this? Where does this come from? And then the light of awareness actually robs it from its energy and power. Because your original mind doesn't move. Your awareness is not positive or negative. That karma doesn't exist by itself. Your mind makes it, supports it, sustains it. And if you stop doing that, you cut off its energy source, you cut off the information input, you're not thinking about it, you have no feelings about it, you don't talk about it, and you don't act it out. Then that karma begins to disappear. Some of them takes very long time. These are our strongest attachments, strongest beliefs, heaviest identities. But you can do it. Because if you see where it comes from, then you know where it goes. Okay? If you are not capable of doing that because your mind is not strong enough or you're unwilling, then you push it back deeper and deeper and you keep your mind clear and you do bows and mantras and meditation every single day. And you only return to your practice. And it gets rotten. It's, uh, sometimes it stinks because it produces derivatives. It comes back to the surface in 10,000 other forms. But it's your choice. If you want to see it, then you take out the root. You don't want to see it, you cut off its resources. But you have to do something. Because you're halfway in, halfway out. Halfway you see it, halfway you don't. That's not a good state of mind. So I asked, what is this for, uh, I think, even two weeks? Just what is this specific? Two weeks, right? You said that, two weeks. Two or three weeks, because I, it was hidden and I don't want it to come up. Mm -hmm. And two weeks ago, I wanted just to take it over. So I, I asked, what is this? And I see it. I looked at it and I see it's empty. But I feel that it subconsciously controls me. I mean... If you like see it, it's not empty. If it's really empty, you don't see it anymore because it's gone. That's empty, but it's gone. So continue but, practicing. Some karmas we carry empty, for lifetimes. I see that it's empty, then it's go, and then it comes back. Okay. Keep going with your practice, okay? You need to do that. Some karma we carry for lifetimes. Two, three weeks of practice won't cut it. Continue. Okay? Thank you. You're welcome.